Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Woo. Let's look a little bit more presentable. That's better. Good morning. Wake, um, welcome. Blech. <laughs> Let's try again. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Coffee and Headlines. This is our morning get together where we take a look at headlines from our city, from our state, from our country. Ooh, there's some nasty headlines today that I want to share with you. And of course, we also take a look at your own comments, ideas, suggestions, and questions about how to best live in Puerto Vallarta, well-connected, well-nurtured as a community of English-speaking locals. So this is what we do, and today is December 15th. It's no exception. So we are going to, as always, go through our news. But before we do that, um, we are going to first uh, remind you that if you want to uh, let us know that you are new to the broadcast. We'd love to welcome you, and we can do that if you write the word new in your comment. If there's something truly important that you wish to bring up, it helps a great deal if you add the letter Q at the beginning of your comment or question. And, of course, today is Wednesday, but, hey, we had a walk yesterday, so we might as well have Taco Tuesday today, although it's, um, it's a slightly botched Taco Tuesday, as you will see once we get to that. But first, let us get into the news, then we'll look at the weather as always, and then we'll look at all your wonderful comments and your good mornings. Okay, so first a nice, well, not a nice, but a bomb. Jose Luis Pelayo, the director of <clears throat> Reglamentos here in Puerto Vallarta, the entity that goes around from business to business to ensure that the permits are in order from established shops to beach vendors, has been fired as of two days ago. Several weeks ago, we reported that businesses along the Malecón had sent an official complaint to the mayor about his arrogant demeanor, and it appeared at the time that he was going to be suspended, but nothing happened. He appeared again um, as biz with business as usual, saying, you know, I'm, no, I'm, I'm here to do my job, this, that, and the other. But a new series of accusations, including testimonials from businesses and other reglamentos inspectors, have revealed that his conduct is not becoming, and he has been collecting fees from other inspectors for irregular matters such as paying for other employees' salaries because they had not gotten paid and, um, and buying a coffee maker for the office. I don't know. The handwritten letter you see here on, on this news item is uh, something that was sent to the mayor by a, a local beach vendor reporting the less than friendly attitude the former director had towards him recently. So Jose Luis Pelayo becomes the first casualty of the new administration, and we can only hope that he will be replaced by another individual that handles the job more transparently 
and more respectfully. Yesterday, we told you about how the vaccine business was not going very smoothly, and apparently the second day, uh, things went much better than the first one. We are reminded that today is the last day for seniors to obtain their AstraZeneca booster shots and for November leftovers to obtain their second Sinovac shot. If you have gone, I hope it went smoothly. If you haven't, then today is the day to do it. Uh, we also want to tell you about the fact that Mayor Michel has set up shop at Seapal's offices temporarily as he becomes more directly involved in the operation of this public office, along with other public offices and independent offices such as DIF um, and the Department of Culture. Uh, this means, hopefully, that our mayor is watching more closely how money is being spent and how decisions are being made. From Seapal, he will also take appointments starting on January with any local citizen that wishes to connect with the mayor directly. We won't, we don't know why he decided to do this from the Seapal uh, facilities and not from City Hall, but he did state, and I quote, Puerto Vallarta demands and deserves a full-time mayor that listens and is mindful of all the needs of Vallartenses. This is why I'm here, supervising that everything is done with quality and warmth, because this is what the people deserve. That sounds very good, and let's hope that it leads to, you know, a better government and more transparent decisions all around. Yesterday, we told you about another irregular real estate project taking shape, this time in Marina Vallarta. And today, we learned that the judge that had been working on the development's behalf, that is, allowing for the development to carry on, has been singled out previously and a number of times for approving as much as 17 irregular real estate projects and a number of gas stations in Guadalajara and Zapopan. Um, apparently, acting against this particular judge uh, is um, in the hands of the state system against corruption. This particular office would be the office to do something about this. Uh, but this particular office has not been, how shall we put it, busy doing their job. Back in 2019, it was announced that Governor Alfaro would document cases showing how the judge mafia in Jalisco operates. And, um, you know, that may have looked very good on paper at the time, but um, that's how things remained. Between 2016 and 2021, that is this year, no single Jalisco judge has been removed from his or her post for wrongdoing, despite the fact that this particular judge has been accused by several municipalities in the state. So if this means that we are to believe that there are no corrupt judges in our system and that is why no judges are getting the slap on the wrist, well, why can I tell, what can I tell you? I don't know that I have an answer for you. All I can tell you is that if we look at the weather, we might have some news to share for the rest of the week. So let's have a look. <music> I hope you'd be pleased with this weather. That way I can take more pleasure in ruining it, says our snarky carrot weather. And we now know that snarky carrot weatherman would not be a good candidate for the reglamentos office in Puerto Vallarta. Uh, it is 26 degrees right now, Celsius, of course. Fahrenheit, our temperature in Fahrenheit degrees is 79. Humidity is at 66%. And um, our weather forecast for today shows that it's going to be humid through the day with a high temperature of 30, low temperature 18. Thursday, tomorrow, it'll be humid and partly cloudy throughout the day with a high temperature of 29, low temperature 18. And Friday, we end the week with a humid and overcast day with a high temperature of 28 and a low temperature of 18. How about that? We have more headlines to share. Casual stuff, but let's see. Ah, yes. 
55 years ago today, the first jet plane arrived in Puerto Vallarta. It was a flight by Mexicana. Nothing more to add here other than time flies when you're having fun, pun intended. Okay. I thought that would be good, but it wasn't. That's okay. We share another detail about the Malecon village before we spend a little time <clears throat> chatting about yesterday's impromptu walk. Apparently, when the municipality realized that it was going to be a bad idea to use the casitas to sell stuff, they offered nearby businesses the opportunity to adopt the casitas and put their logos in them for a tax-deductible donation. This would explain why we saw one of the casitas with Senor Frog's logo right next to the restaurant. And we also know now that the donations received by the city will apparently be used to afford a better fireworks show at the end of the year. We know that uh, the whole experience is supposed to be inaugurated today, and uh, we hope that this is a successful event for the city, um, no matter what. It's not for me, but um, I hope it makes some people happy. Um, and I wanted to talk a little bit about what went on yesterday. Yesterday, it was fun for me because it gave me the opportunity to try this new program that I'm using to do the live interviews. And it also allows me to go live directly from my phone, my iPhone, without major problems. And we saw that that part was successful. Yay. But um, unfortunately, the, the image stabilization on my iPhone is not the best. I don't know if it gets better with newer iPhone models, but it became clear to me when I watched the walk from yesterday that it was not fun to watch. I mean, the camera was really jittery, and uh, and I think we're going to be taking advantage of this feature uh, only in situations where we are doing a broadcast from elsewhere, but not necessarily moving the camera, or if we're sitting out at the Malecon, but the camera is doing um, is is uh, in a static position you know, on a tripod. So don't worry, we won't do that again. I, it's clear to me that we have to continue doing the walks and we enjoy doing the walks, but we will use the usual setup that we have. Um, although it was fun to read your comments live as I was walking down the street, it was fun to get directions from you as to where I should walk next. Uh, if you have any thoughts, positive or not positive about this, uh, if you have any comments about the walk, I would love to read them. This is all... Um, for the, no other purpose than to give you a better quality experience every time. Uh, let me see what else we have. Ah, we have two, two fun lists, I hope. Let me come back to my headline view. The first list comes from the New York Times. And uh, Tommy, this is for you, my dear friend Tommy Laflamme, who is in Seattle. And for anybody that enjoys classical music, the New York Times offers this list of 25 best classical music tracks of 2021 with lovely explanations to each one of them and links for us to be able to listen to and enjoy. So now you know what I'm going to be doing this afternoon, other than making sure that tomorrow's broadcast is fun. And the other list comes from Vox, this one of the 21 best movies of 2021. I'll be very curious about this list, if anything, because, as you know, some of the films we love to watch are not even brought to Puerto Vallarta. I mean, whatever happened to respect the autobiography of Aretha Franklin, it never came. Um, I don't know if it's on this list or if it's not, but um, it'll be fun to watch this list and find movies that may be available on Netflix or any of the other on-demand channels. Feel free to have a look at these items when I share them in the show notes and then let me know your thoughts about movies that you thought were great or not great. I am happy to report that the sale of tickets for one night only a spectacular musical extravaganza at Teatro Vallarta is going very well. Uh, there's a, quite a number of tickets that, has already, that have already been sold. So if you're planning on attending this concert, this would be a good time for you to pursue your tickets. You can buy them directly from Teatro Vallarta at this link that I'm going to share today. There are three different tiers, three different tiers of tickets, uh, ticket prices starting at $30 USD uh, to 30 American dollars and going up to VIP tickets that will receive access to um, special after party 
with the talent. And there's more information about the concert in this link. Of course, uh, as you know, I'm going to be interviewing Amy Armstrong and Fernando Gonzalez on Friday evening at 7 p.m. And I'm hoping that we will learn more about details about the concert and why we should be compelled to go, other than the fact that your surely is going to be the master of ceremonies and we're going to be uh, have the opportunity to enjoy beautiful music made by people live. There's going to be, I think, 12 musicians on stage. I forget the exact number. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Now, let's take a quick look at your comments just to see what everyone is thinking about. Good morning to everyone. Good morning to everyone that says good morning back. And thank you to everyone that says welcome whenever somebody new comes in. The way you all participate and engage in these broadcasts, I think it's absolutely amazing and wonderful. Uh, let us take a look. Do -de -do -de -do -do -da 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 -da. Snow. <laughs> Jeff was snowed in. I don't remember snow anymore. I used to have to paddle it uh, on a daily basis, but I don't remember snow anymore. Uh, what a nice contrast. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Good morning, Logan. Logan is off spending some quality time with, uh, with his parents. We wish you well. You know, absorb all the family good vibes so you can share some with us when you come back. Um, oh, good. Congratulations, Julie. Naval Hospital yesterday for the booster shot. One hour start to finish. See, that is great. That is great news. Um, bum, bim, bum, bum. <laughs> oh, Dave, it stinks at Zapal. Makes sense for short, shorter appointments. Got to get out of there quickly. You know, I have to agree with you, Dave. Every time I walk by the Zapal offices on Francisco Villa, I wonder how on earth people can possibly live with that stench on a regular basis. But hey, they're in the business of making stenchy water smell less stenchy. So I just hope something good comes out of that. I really, really do. Uh, da -dee -da 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 -dee, da -dee -da -da. Oh, oh, a new cyclist. As a, the newest member of Puerto Vallarta cycling community, I, for one, I'm quite concerned about the placement of those pinche casitas right along the route. I plan to commute back and forth to work twice a day. Well, Logan, we know that the casitas are going to be there until um, January 15th or such is the information I have read, and this answers Catherine's question. And hopefully that will be the case. The casitas will come and go. And hopefully, if it was unwise for the government to spend that money in the first place, hopefully this will serve as a learning opportunity. Um, Karen comments, I loved your walk video audio more than acceptable to me. I would tend to agree and disagree with you, Karen. I watched it on my iPhone and it doesn't look so bad, but I am sure that anybody that is watching from a larger screen, possibly even a big television screen, it gets really jarring and uncomfortable when things are moving that, that much. So in an effort to make things as manageable for everyone, we will, um, we will use the other way to do the walks uh, moving forward. And we are keeping our eyes open on other technology that becomes available to make sure that we can do the interactive walks in the future. Let's see what else we have. Uh, doesn't sound like this was thought out well. No, I don't think so, Suzanne. And again, I think they're going to be gone by the end of, uh, by the middle of January. Oh my goodness, we just got 10 inches of snow and now today it will be 60 degrees and there's a threat of a tornado. That's Minnesota for you. Well, you know, casitas where they don't belong, uh, uh, corruption with our judicial system, uh, that's Puerto Vallarta and Jalisco for you. <laughs> you know, all our towns have their own peculiarities. Uh, we breeze through this broadcast, and I don't see any more comments or questions. So feel free to... Oh, will you add the concert link at a later time for the concert in 
uh, February and March for Brandon and James? Yes, we will certainly do that. I know that they have started advertising that they're going to be performing at the Palm. So I am sure that if you visit the Palm's website, um, you should be able to find out ticket information right away. Needless to say, I'm quite tickled by having had the opportunity of of connecting with Brandon and, and James. I don't remember if I've mentioned this here at Coffee and Headlines, but, um, oh my God, tacos. Thank you very much, Bill. See, this is why I, if I don't look at my list of things to discuss, I forget about that. Okay, but I, we, we will do tacos in a second. Before I do tacos, let me share a small anecdote that I think you'll appreciate as English-speaking locals. As you know, I have no problem with entertainment being what it is in our city because I've come to realize that for better or for worse, the majority of the entertainment venues are more invested the majority of time in entertainment for tourism. And that's okay. That's what it is. You know, what am I to do? I have believed and I continue to believe that a larger or increasingly larger number of us are hoping for a better, not a better, a different type of entertainment, more cultural entertainment. And at some point in my interview with Brandon and James, I asked, I mentioned to them, you know, I'm sure that every city that you perform at has its own peculiarities and its own unique qualities. What are the challenges for you here uh, in Puerto Vallarta, what are the specific challenges to our city? And they very politely and diplomatically said something to the effect that there is a lot of tourism entertainment here, and there are a lot. They even commented there's there's a lot of drag queen acts. And I'm sure that Brandon and James did not seem did not mean to say anything against this, but uh, clearly I interpreted their their comment as. Having the uh, showing the difference between performing at cities where tourism entertainment prevails and other cities where more cultural tourism is um, available. As for me, I wish that we had more cultural entertainment and cultural performances available. What I mean by cultural, I mean ballet, music, theater, and so forth and so on. I wonder if you have any thoughts about that and uh, you're welcome to share them with me while I talk to you about Taco Tuesday. You see, yesterday was going to be this perfect day in which I said to myself, um, I'm going to go do this walk, and this walk is going to go well, and after the walk, I'm going to go and have lunch at this taco place where I haven't been in many years, and I've been craving their tacos, um, and, and this is going to be a good addition for, for, uh, for Taco Tuesday. So I went to El Tacón de Marlin. Again, I have not been to El Tacón de Marlin for many, many years. So I had it in my mind because it's called El Tacón de Marlin. And we established that tacón means a ginormous taco, that I was going to be able to get a ginormous taco at El Tacón de Marlin, and I walked in, and it has not changed much from before. It's a fairly small venue. It's air-conditioned, it's enclosed, but it is quite comfortable in there, and you sit down, and immediately after you sit down, you get served with this. This is a salad. Where is my mouse? There's my mouse. Uh, this is a small salad that you get, and you get lime, yum-yum, and you get pickled uh, vegetables and, and, and jalapeno peppers. And so I'm sitting here thinking, wow, I'm going to, to, to love you know my tacos. And then the guy says to me, well, the menu is on the wall. And I look at the prices and I see that those are very high prices for tacos. And that is when I quickly remembered that El Tacón de Marlin is all about burritos and not tacos. So one could argue, as a very well-known Mexican comedian says, that when you order tacos or chilaquiles or sopes or tostadas, it's all the same ingredients presented differently. I figured, well, you know, if, if this is going to be a burrito, well, a burrito is like a big 
flour tortilla taco wrapped differently. So in a way, it accounts for a Taco Tuesday, but it but it doesn't. But the bottom line is I have forgotten how amazing. Oh, I didn't mean to click twice. Hold on just a second. Let me go back to that image. Uh, ah, hold on just a second. Show a keynote and zoom. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I don't know why I lost my presentation. Ah, I know what I need to do. Hang on. There you go. And I think oh, I'm not. Hold on. Almost there. Almost. There you go. That's what I wanted to show you. As I was saying, I had forgotten how amazing these uh, these tacos are. And I mean, these burritos are. And I very much enjoyed mine. And even though this is not a taco place, I totally recommend El Tacón de Marlin as a great place to enjoy um, a Marlin burrito. They have other flavors, as you saw in, in the previous slide. So there you are. This is um, our slightly botched Taco Tuesday, and that's pretty much what we have for today. Let me now take a quick look at what am I doing up there? Well, um, let's see. Goodbye. Uh, this is what we have for today. Let me see if there are any last minute comments that have shown up here. Let's see. Gina says, hello. Hello, Gina. I wonder where you are flying the friendly skies these days. Um, ba -dum, bum, bim, bum, bum. Jeff says, good morning. Love your broadcast. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you for loving coffee and headlines. We love it that you love it. Um, Marie says, I wish there was a venue in PV strictly for stand-up comedians. You know, there, there may come the time in which we get one of those venues. I wish there was a venue in PV that was just a theater. And I wish there was a venue that was just a jazz venue. You know, I wish venues were more specialized, but maybe there's not enough market for that. Uh, what is clear to me is that and I'm going to generalize and everybody can or anybody can contradict me if you want. When given the opportunity, the venues that we know are more likely to go and uh, favor performances that are going to be favored by tourists because they can increase their prices and offer them at prices that look affordable to tourists. Um, if you look for and that, you know, is it's as simple as looking at what the ticket systems are in place at any of the venues. Teatro Vallata charges in pesos, as they should. But if you look at any of the other uh, venues, they all have ticketing systems that charge in dollars, American dollars. And why is that? You know, if we're in Mexico. But that's a completely different, different uh, story. We're not going to go there today. Uh, let's see. Suzanne asks, what kind of burrito did you have? I had... The Marlin burrito. I had Marlin in my mind and it was absolutely wonderful. Marie says, would love to see a jazz venue. Well, that makes two of us and that's a problem. And it's a chicken and egg situation. If we build specialized venues, will performers come? I mean, the jazz foundation on, uh, on the Malecon was supposed to be that, a jazz venue. Of course, we don't know why on earth they chose to put an open air jazz venue right next door to the place that has a live Cuban salsa band playing every single night. I mean, that was just brilliant in my book. But again, that's another conversation for another time. And, um, and I think this does bring us to the end of our broadcast. Now that I have remembered to show you uh, the burrito that I had yesterday. So there you have it. This was our broadcast for this hump day. If you enjoyed it um, or if you found information that was useful or that made you laugh or anything, you know where to support our broadcasts. If you didn't, well, let us know what kind of content you'd like to see here. We're always looking for your comments and your suggestions. And uh, and I see that there's, there's, there's a lot of people 
Okay, these are great comments all of a sudden. See, I'm going to agree and disagree with you here, Dave, only because Le Bistro is a restaurant. And when you have jazz, at, well, people are eating, you're either going to be eating or you're going to be paying attention to the music. And I know that that situation is good enough for some musicians, but, you know, I would not expect Wynton Marsalis, you know, to be background music while I'm eating because, you know, that's just not who Wynton Marsalis is. And we're never going to have the likes of Wynton Marsalis uh, in Puerto Vallarta or great jazz vocalists or this, that, and the other, as long as we don't have a dedicated venue that is respectful of the quality of music we are hoping to get. Um, -dum 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 -dum. The tickets have also gotten quite expensive. Uh, well, again, uh, we, we know this. We know this. And I know, I will say that paying $30 for the er, the least expensive tickets at Teatro Vallarta doesn't seem expensive to me considering the quality of talent that we're going to see and considering the fact that we're going to see live musicians perform spontaneous live music for us. But when I see other shows in town, I didn't even say concerts, other shows that are charging, well, nah, let's not have this conversation today. But... Um, but hopefully, you know, things will change for the better for those of us that are here living as locals. That's it. That's what I have for today. So um, enjoy yourselves. Stay happy. Stay kind. Buy tickets for Amy's concert. It's going to be a lot of fun. And I will see you again tomorrow. And if not tomorrow, sometime soon.